Welcome to 9.4 homework. You should have seen the notes on these problems, although I'm not certain I didn't. I don't recall offhand if I had notes on these pro problems. Uh, but this is page four, and this is this involves just short little methods. Like in rectangular form, we have equations of lines. We have point-slope form. We have slope-intercept form. We have standard form. Here's a form where if we're given two points, we can get directly to a, a parametric equation. See how they've they've initiated this T in here. And circles, they say, well, circles, sure, we're like x squared plus y squared equals 9, circle. Here, they have, if we have the center, hk, and we know what the radius is, we'd have, we'd have the equation of a circle in rectangular, but we also have it now in parametric form. What do we need for an ellipse? For an ellipse, we need to know a center, like back on this problem, which we, which we actually graph parametrically. We know the center is at 4, negative 2. We need to know A. A in this case was 3. We need to know B. B in this case was 2. And now they're saying an ellipse, you need to know HK, the center. You need to know A. You need to know B. And we just invoke cosine and sine. And same with hyperbola. So kind of makes a little bit of sense that we would have these if we were working in this environment. And believe me when I say when you're dealing with conic sections, primarily circles, ellipses, and hyperbolas. However, lines are conic sections as well. There are definite reasons why working with those parametrically makes more sense because oftentimes it's a particle in motion and we want to talk about where that particle is at time t. So anyway, I want to make sense uh, with one of these formulas for you. So let's say we didn't have this formula here for a line. And we want to turn this into parametric equations. And we, we have a line that passes through 1, negative 1, and it passes through 4, 8. So it looks like this. And probably, if they say it's a line, it goes on forever, like this. Well, what we don't know is where did the, when did time start. So we can pick whatever point we want to say, hey, at time 0, we're here. So let's say at time 0, I'm right here. And then some amount of time passes till I get to here. I don't know. It could be three seconds. It could be seven days. But I'm just going to say this is t equals one unit of time. And that one unit of time might be seven days. So anyway, one unit of time. So what's happened here? From here, we have gone up nine and over 3, so we're kind of invoking our slope here a little bit in this. So let's just talk about x. What's happened to x? And I can't talk about y with this if I want to talk about parametrics. x started at 1. Here's the point 1, negative 1. x started at 1, and it, the x value, changed 3 in a time unit. So in that time unit, we added 3 to it, but in 2 time units, we'd add 6 to it, and in 7 time units, we'd add 21 time units to it. So we want time times 3. So that is just x equals 1 plus 3t. How about the y? The y started at negative 1, and each time unit, if we go another time unit, we're going to go up 9 over 3, up 9. Each time unit, we're multiplying by 9. So y is negative 1 plus 9t. So together, here's my parametric equations. Hope that makes sense. And connect the dots, give it some orientation, and we got it. Um, now let's go ahead and use this formula. It says the x equals well, the x1, our x1 is 1. Let's add to that t times x2, 4, minus x1, 1. And I get x equals 4 minus 1. There's my 3. 1 plus 3t. And how about y? y started at negative 1 or the, the y1 value is negative 1. What do we add to that? t times 
the y2 value, the y2 value is 8 minus negative 1. That is y equals negative 1 plus positive 9t. And we see, oh yeah, there's, there's a formula that makes sense. Now, making sense out of the others, these, the circle, ellipse, and hyperbola, um, it can be done. We're going to go through the mechanics. I do need to make one statement. This, this A going with the X implies that this ellipse is wide. And this, this A going with secant, secant, remember, is, is uh, R on X. It goes with the X. So secant goes with the X. That's implying that our hyperbola is right and left here. Otherwise, those formulas, the A and the B, get, get changed a little bit. So there's some things that go on there for ellipses that are tall and skinny and hyperbolas that open up and down. But we're going to be dealing with ellipses that are, these formulas are going to work for us for these. Okay, so here we go. Um, we actually aren't responsible for problems 37 through 40. These are just results that we would get by proving these formulas, much like what I did here. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to use them. So we need a circle. So what do we need? We need H and K. H, K is negative 2, negative 5. R is 7. And those are just our puzzle pieces that we need. So our circle is X equals H, negative 2, plus 7, our radius, times cosine of theta, and y equals k, negative 5, plus 7 times sine. Definitely worth noting cosine, oh yeah, cosine is x on r. Cosine should be an x. Sine is y on r. So, in fact, if you think of that as x on r, and what are we canceling? The r's here, um, it just tells, it, that gets us to our center. Anyway, that's it for that. Now again, ellipses, notice the vertices are right and left. The foci are right and left, meaning this formula up here does apply. So let's see, can I do this? Say hi to Eric Clapton. I haven't thought that out too much, but we need to be able to see these together. So there we go. I'm nothing if not flexible. All right. So ellipses, vertices, what do we need to know? We need to know HK. HK, well, if the vertices are 5 right and 5 left, up 0, then the center is 0, 0. Now, foci, so what do we have here? The vertices are, let's just draw a quick sketch of this. It's probably warranted. The vertices are 5 right, 5 left. It's an ellipse. The foci are 4 and 4. So what do we know? A is 5. B is, don't know. C is 4. A squared 25 equals B squared plus C squared 16. B squared is 9. B is 3. What do we need? We need H. We need K. We need A. We need B. And we need it to be wide. And it is wide. So our equations are X equals H 0 plus A 5 cosine of theta Y equals 0 plus 3 sine of theta, and of course the zeros are extraneous. And now you should be in really good shape to do 44. Notice, right and left hyperbola. The vertices are to the right and to the left. It does look like this, so this applies. We don't have to switch the a's and the b's and rethink tangents and secants. Okay, give that one a try. We've got hk is 0, 0, if you want to draw it, absolutely. I think it's, a, it's, it's probably never a bad idea. Vertices are 2 and negative 2, 0. It looks like this. Foci are here and here. What else do we need to know? We need to know A. A is 2. 
We need to know B. Don't know B yet, but I do know that A is 2. C is, can't spell focus without a C. Can't spell foci without a C. C is 3, so C squared 9 equals A squared plus B squared. B squared equals 5. B is square root of 5. So what do we end up with? Let's see. X is H, 0, plus A, 2, secant of theta. Y is K, 0, extraneous, plus B, square root of 5, times tangent of theta. And there we have it. So that takes care of page 4. Um, good luck. Let me know what I can help you with.